NBC 15 News at 11 starts now. Now at 11, major changes are coming to retailers nationwide to help keep you better protected from hackers. Plus, after months of debate, one building in downtown Madison will no longer allow the homeless to stay on its property overnight. And a new law banning smoking in cars with children will explain the areas where it's now being implemented. Good morning, everyone. I'm Ashley Matthews. Christina's off today. A cool start to our Thursday, and those winds are expected to pick up for the rest of the week and the weekend with all the answers on our forecast. Let's head on over to meteorologist Brian Dukes. Hi, Brian. Hi, Ashley. You just told the forecast, but uh, yeah, very fall-like out there after what was a rather warm September. Looks like we will have a lot of sunshine, though, as we head into the afternoon. We're already seeing that. Just a few clouds as you work closer to Lake Michigan. But temperature-wise, been on the cool side. Just 56 degrees right now in Madison, the same in Watertown. 59 down in Janesville and a couple of 55s as you head into the southwest corner of the state. But those winds, as you mentioned, out of the north and east, 10 to 15 miles an hour at times, gusting the 20 miles an hour. So definitely going to add a little bit of a chill as you're out and about this afternoon. Maybe even a light jacket from time to time. Not a bad idea either. Looks like we will top out into the lower 60s. Quickly back down into the 50s, though, as we head into 6 o'clock tonight with more fall-like weather on the way. I'll have more on that, though, coming up in a few minutes. Ashley? Brian, thank you. Today is the deadline for retailers to begin accepting the new credit cards that feature embedded security chips, but millions of Americans have yet to receive them, and most stores say they are not ready. Here's NBC's Tom Costello with more. Question one, why are the banks rolling out the new cards? It's part of a massive upgrade against credit card fraud that last year cost more than $8 billion in the U.S. On the face of each new credit card, a computer chip, each transaction generates a unique code that can't be replicated. It makes stealing your credit card information almost useless. Question two, will I be required to enter a PIN code when I use the card? No, while banks in Europe and Canada require PIN codes with the cards, here in the U.S., you'll simply sign your receipt like you have for years. Many security experts say that's a mistake. The U.S. should also require PIN codes. They're taking a half step uh, towards a technology known as chip and signature. The PIN is a critical element of security and has been proven to reduce fraud in Europe. Question three, what should I do if I haven't yet received a new chip card? In fact, 60% of Americans haven't yet received their new card. Don't worry, it should arrive by the end of the year. Meanwhile, you can still use your existing credit card with a magnetic strip. You can always contact your bank about when the new card might arrive. Question four, if my credit card details are stolen, who pays? If your card is compromised at a retailer that hasn't upgraded its systems, the retailer is responsible. Otherwise, the bank will bear the cost. But many retailers haven't yet upgraded. Question five, what should I expect at the checkout stand? You'll insert your card for 10 to 20 seconds rather than slide it. And that has many retailers concerned. The holiday shopping season is almost upon us and, and retailers are worried that this is going to cause longer lines. And it might because these transactions may take a little bit longer to do. And that was Tom Costello reporting. A lot of people are also wondering if their ATMs will change. The answer is no. For now, gas stations and ATMs do not have to upgrade. You'll still swipe your debit card just like you do now. Also happening today, dozens of people in Madison will have to find a new place to sleep tonight. A loitering ban goes into effect at 5 p.m. outside the city county building. It was approved because of ongoing sanitary and drug use concerns. Officers will ask those staying outside the city county building to leave the premises. Porch Lice, an organization providing services to the homeless, is anticipating an increase in people coming in starting tonight. And today, a group of state legislators will announce a bill that would impact wrongful convictions. The bill would overhaul the state's limits on compensation for those who have been wrongly imprisoned. Currently, the law allows $5,000 for every year wrongfully imprisoned, but is capped at five years. In our continuing coverage, Governor Walker's approval rating has hit its lowest ever in the state of Wisconsin. The latest Marquette University Law School poll shows his rating is at 37 percent. Meantime, Senator Ron Johnson trails Democrat Russ Feingold in the Senate race to be decided next year. The poll shows Feingold is supported by 50 percent of registered voters. Johnson has 36 percent of support. Feingold led 47 to 42 percent in August.
A Milwaukee man is facing felony theft charges after police find thousands of dollars worth of stolen merchandise in his vehicle from stores in the Madison area. Deputies with the Dane County Sheriff's Office pulled over 25-year-old Andrew Galicka near Cottage Grove yesterday. The deputy searched his truck and found a number of power tools in the original boxes and a large amount of unopened bottles of alcohol. Galicka admitted to stealing more than $2,000 worth of power tools from Home Depot and $900 worth of liquor from Woodman's in Sun Prairie. Authorities also recovered a heroin kit during the search of his trunk. Four teens are in custody after a 14-year-old was shot near a Beloit High School. The shooting happened at the Taco John's on Liberty Street yesterday. Beloit Memorial High School was placed on lockdown as a precaution for a portion of the afternoon. The teen was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. A 16-year-old was allegedly responsible for that shooting. The others caused the disturbance at the restaurant. Emergency officials are meeting across the East Coast to prepare for the possible landfall of Hurricane Joaquin. Emergency crews off the coast of North Carolina are getting ready for the powerful storm. Local fire chiefs, EMS power companies, and others discussed what they have in terms of resources in case Hurricane Joaquin does hit the Outer Banks. Emergency responders hope residents will also start planning ahead. People need to be preparing. They need to be thinking about their emergency plans, their emergency kits, making sure they have water, food, medicines, uh, supplies for the dogs, the cats, all of those things that should be done to get ready for a storm. Recent rainfall has left water levels around the island especially high and winds are expected to stay strong. In your Decision 2016 coverage, Hillary Clinton's campaign says it raised $28 million in the past three months to fuel her bid for the Democratic presidential nomination. Clinton's campaign says 93% of the donations were $100 or less. More than 60% came from women. Her campaign manager said in a statement that Clinton is thrilled and grateful for the support. Meantime, Republican presidential frontrunner Donald Trump says he would send back Syrian refugees taken in by the U.S. if he's elected president. Trump said during a rally in New Hampshire yesterday that he's worried the refugees could be disguised as rebels. He says that if he wins, the refugees are going back. Secretary of State John Kerry announced earlier this month that the U.S. would significantly increase the number of migrants it takes in over the next two years. The Secret Service is under fire for digging up personal information to reportedly embarrass a member of Congress. It is a devastating setback for the agency that says they're working on rebuilding trust. NBC's Peter Alexander has the latest. He's been one of the most vocal critics of the Secret Service. The Secret Service has to abide by the law. They have serious concerns about the current leadership. This is what's so infuriating. Republican Jason Chaffetz, chairman of the House Oversight Committee, has aggressively pursued allegations of misconduct within the Secret Service's ranks. And apparently that didn't sit well to some inside the agency. A new report released by the Homeland Security Department's Inspector General shows 45 Secret Service employees improperly accessed the congressman's 2003 application to join the Secret Service, where he applied to become an agent and was turned down. Chaffetz tells NBC News he was stunned. Shocked and surprised on how, how pervasive this was, and um, it takes its toll. It, it, it should have never happened. The report also contains an email from Secret Service Assistant Director Edward Lowry to a colleague writing back in March. Some information that Chaffetz might find embarrassing needs to get out, just to be fair. Two days later, Chaffetz's rejected application was reported online in the Daily Beast. Lowry denied to investigators that he ordered the congressman's file to be leaked, saying he was, quote, reflecting his stress and his anger. The Secret Service is entrusted with weapons and guns next to the President of the United States, and it scares me that they would act like this. It's the latest damaging blow for an agency fighting to overcome a series of scandals and high-profile embarrassments. This latest scandal comes just one day after the president publicly thanked the agency for its job protecting the Pope. I wanted to make a special commendation of our Secret Service. And that was Peter Alexander reporting in a statement to the Washington Post Secret Service Director Joe Clancy said he reviewed the report and promised that anyone that committed misconduct will be held accountable.
A proposal banning smoking in vehicles carrying children is now law in England and Wales. Here's how it works. Whenever anyone under 18 is in the car, smokers will still be liable even if the windows are down or the sunroof is open. However, the law will not apply to people who are driving in a convertible with the roof down. It also does not apply to e-cigarettes. Drivers and passengers who break the law could face a penalty fine of $75. Children are particularly vulnerable to the effects of secondhand smoke because they actually breathe more quickly, so they absorb more of these harmful chemicals and particles, and their lungs are also still developing. A child with a significant lung problem just being exposed to secondhand smoke may trigger a life threatening problem with their breathing, uh, so it's as serious as that. Now, according to the British Lung Foundation, more than 430,000 children are exposed to secondhand smoke in cars each week.